Malu Unjani. Good morning for those of you that speak English. We are getting started this morning. Wow. If you heard that, that was not a truck driving by. That was my wife's stomach. Good morning, Miss Kay. As you hop on, let's share this. This one is not going to be short, but it's not going to be long by any means. And it, just put in your favorite fruit of the Spirit. You can put an emoji as your favorite fruit. We'll just wait for some people to hop on and then we'll get started. Right now it's just me, my wife, and Kay Zaniga. Just waiting here for you with my hands lifted high. Alright. Well, happy Friday. Kay said watermelon, which I'm guessing is long suffering, cherries, which is probably patience, and pineapples is gentleness. Well, good morning. Let me know. I see people hopping on. Let me know who's hopping on. Amy Poindexter with a little bit of long suffering, also known as watermelon. If you saw the title, it is Producing Fruit Like Dole and Del Monte. Four questions about producing fruit. So this morning, I'm going to kind of answer four questions about producing fruit. Good morning, Miss Judy Galloway, watching from Waxahachie. <clears throat> so let's get started. I'm tired of waiting around on people. Got stuff to do. All right. So the first question is, what is fruit? When we say producing fruit, what is fruit? Well, and we are talking about fruit of the spirit this week. So, as brain, sorry, my, my wife is abusing the dog. Please don't call CPS, but she's abusing the dog. She's supposed to be producing this video, but she's actually just. Seeing how many distractions she can throw my way. So, all right, what is fruit? So we're talking about fruit of the spirit, and we're talking about producing fruit. I'm kind of hitting this from a way. Good morning, Kaisha and Corey. Hitting this from a way that our lives should be producing fruit, and the fruit should be the fruit of the spirit. And so that's what we're going to get into. What is fruit? What should our life be producing? I know some guys have read this, but this is the foundation of scripture for the week. Brandon pulled it from another passage, uh, passage of scripture, but Galatians 5, 16 through 26 is what I'm going to read, because this tells us what we should be producing and what we should not be producing. So verse 16 says, I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. So how do we produce fruit? By walking in the spirit. How do we, pro well, how do we produce good fruit? By walking in the spirit. How do we produce bad fruit? By walking in the flesh. Verse 17, for the flesh lusts against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary to one another, so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. So this right here shows us that if we are led by the spirit, then we will produce good fruit, the fruit of the spirit. If we are led by the flesh, then we will produce the lust of the flesh, or bad fruit. Now, if you look at all the different... Well, we'll get into that just now. So verse 19, let's see what the works of the flesh are. Now the works of the flesh are evident, which means they are obvious, which are adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lewdness, idolatry, sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbursts of wrath, selfish ambitions, which I, I love selfish ambitions because if you look at the rest of it, 
It all comes from our own selfish desires. Everything in the root or in the works of the flesh are rooted in our own selfish desires. It goes on dissensions, heresies, envy, murders, drunkenness, rivalries, and of the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in times past. Those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Verse 22. So now we get into the good fruit. That was the list of bad fruit. Things you do not want to produce in your life. Now we're going to look at the things that we want to produce in our lives. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. So again, if you are self-controlled, then it's easy to do the rest of those and have the rest of those in your life. Against such there is no law, and those who are Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live in the Spirit, let us also walk in the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking one another, envying one another. So that was our list of fruit. Right there we have a list of good fruit and bad fruit. Thanks for hopping on, guys. I see a bunch more of you hopping on, so just let me know where you're watching from. Say hi so that I can say hi back to you. We are talking about producing fruit. We're talking about producing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. We just answered the question, what is fruit? So now we're going on to how do we produce fruit? So let's go to Psalms 1. And we're just going to read the first three verses. It says this, The way of the righteous and the end of the godly. Verse 1, Blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in it he meditates day and night. So we see here, we have to meditate in his word day and night. And it goes on, He shall be, because we are meditating in his word day and night, that's why we do these short devotionals, so that you're meditating on it to start your day. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. How important is that? I always get whenever I read this, I always give this illustration. I was on a mission trip in Namibia in the desert. Literally nothing but sand and rock all around. Then you'd come around a curve or up a hill and you'd see all these trees in a row in a line. And you knew there was a river there because that was the only place in the middle of the desert that there were trees. And here we see that we shall be, when we meditate on the word day and night, that we shall be like trees planted right by the river. That, and it goes on to say that we will pr- brings forth its fruit in its season. So we will produce fruit. If we meditate on his word day and night, we will produce fruit. It also says that whosoever leaf shall not wither so you most trees that aren't evergreens their their leaves die in the winter and right here it says our leaves shall not wither our leaves shall not die which means we'll continually produce fruit and whatever he does shall prosper all right so number four or number three sorry how can you kill your fruit if any of you have ever tried gardening you can realize that it's very easy to kill your harvest, to kill your fruit, to kill your vegetables, whatever it is. But we can do that spiritually as well. So how do we kill our fruit? And I guess we should actually word this, how to prevent from killing your fruit. 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9 through 11. First Corinthians six nine through eleven. It says this Don't you realize that those who do wrong will not inherit the kingdom of God? Don't fool yourselves. Those who indulge in sexual sin, or who worship idols, or who commit adultery, or are male prostitutes or practice homosexuality 
or are thieves, or greedy people, or drunkards, or are abusive, or cheat people. None of these will inherit the kingdom of God. Some of you were once like that, but you were cleansed, you were made holy, you were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of our God. So right here it tells us that if we if we indulge into the fruit or the lust of the flesh, the bad fruit that we looked at before, that we will not inherit the kingdom of God. So if we do those things, we are killing our fruit. We are killing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives. It also says the good the good news right here is that maybe we were once like that. Maybe you're still like that today. But we are cleansed by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. You can be cleansed today if that's you. You can be cleansed today while you're watching this video. I'll give you that chance here in a few minutes at the end. But maybe maybe you're saved now, you've given your life to the Lord, and the devil's always reminding me, oh, reminding you that you did that, you did that, you've done too much. Right here it says, but you were cleansed, you were made holy, you were made right with God by calling on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, so the fourth question. Why should I produce fruit? Why should we produce fruit in our life? Why should we produce good fruit? Why should we be producing the fruit of the Spirit in our lives? John 15. You know, our, our hashtag or our catchphrase for this ministry is don't be that vine. This is it right here. I am the true vine. My Father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. Another translation says he cuts off. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes that it may bear more fruit. So the whole reason we do these devotions, the whole reason we say don't be that vine, we want you producing fruit in your lives. We want you producing good fruit. We want you producing the fruit of the Spirit. What did it say? The fruit of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness gentleness, self-control. We want you producing those so you don't get cut off from the kingdom of God. We want each and every one of you to make heaven. So if you're watching this and you say, hey, I'm producing bad fruit in my life consistently. This is what I do and I want to cut it off today. I want to be a producer of good fruit. I'm going to say a quick prayer and I just want you to say it with me real quick. Just repeat it. Say it out loud. And here we go. Just say this with me. Say, Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me and cleanse me. Set me free. Jesus, I thank you that you died for me. I believe you've risen. You're coming back for me. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. Give me a passion for the things of God. Give me a holy boldness to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am forgiven, I am set free, I am born again, and I'm on my way to heaven because I have Jesus in my heart. Well, if you prayed that prayer, just reach out to us, shoot us an email. You can message us right there on Facebook. You can put a message in the comments on YouTube, uh, Periscope, wherever you're watching us from. You can email us at thesaltshaker513 at gmail.com. If you haven't partnered with us and you'd like to do so, you can also do that on the website. You can cl click Give Now. Uh, you can also give on Cash App, which would be dollar sign five thirteen salt shaker. You can also give directly into the account Zell. Just are using our email address that my wife, the producer, the dog abuser, has put in the comments. Other than that, we love you guys. Have a great weekend. Come back tomorrow, and we'll see you then. Bye-bye.